Hello everybody, my name is Carrie. Thank you so much for being here. Today is September 1st, 2021. It is the first day of almost fall. <laughs> uh, you know, summer is kind of winding down. We here in Oregon are feeling a little bit of cooler weather, which feels really nice. A little bit of a cooler breeze means that fall is almost here and I am very excited about it. Um, I thought I would just kind of do a really quick episode to announce the winner of the quilt book, Ghoulish Tidings. And I've got some new fabric for a new quilt that I really want to cut into, but I wanted to kind of show you the fabrics before I cut into it. So there's a few things other than the giveaway. Uh, thank you for being here. Um, so I'm going to just, just do the giveaway right away so that if you're not interested in the rest of my ramblings, you don't have to stick around, although I hope that you do, but I'm not going to lead you on to do that. So, um, I mentioned this on the last episode and I was going to do a giveaway. This is Ghoulish Tidings by Lamb Farm Designs. Uh, Jenny is a very good friend of mine and this is her first pattern book. She's written other patterns and she has um, some really cute patterns on her website, which I will link down below. But she gave me a book to give away here on the podcast and um, it closed yesterday, the end of August. And you were to just leave a comment below stating that you wanted the book. And I took those names and I wrote them on a piece of paper and there's not a ton, but you know, you got a pretty good chance of winning. So I thought I would just do a little drawing and see the thing that's funny about doing it um, from YouTube is I can't look to see where you are or who you are at like you can on Instagram. So I don't know who all's here. Darylin, Darylin Seraphin, you come on down. You are the lucky winner. So Darylin, if you could contact me, um, you can email me at thecreativeobsession at gmail.com. You can message me on Instagram. I am at Carrie Makes Stuff and get a hold of me one way or the other give me your address i wanted to do this as soon as i could so that i could get this mailed out hopefully this week so hopefully daryl and you see this um because if you're wanting to make it for this halloween um season i wanted to get it out as soon as possible so congratulations thank you to everyone who uh put their name in the hat basically but if you want this pattern book, please go to the website and you can order it directly from the website and she would be happy to send it to you. Don't know how much, don't know how much, but go to the website and find out. So congratulations and thank you to everyone that uh, was excited about it. I know she's very excited and um, she's got pattern books in some local quilt shops around the Portland area and stuff. So that's, that's pretty exciting. I'm really proud of her. I did mention that I'm going to make a new quilt. Um, I've talked about it in the past where I've got a friend who has a couple of daughters that are probably going to be getting married soon. It may even happen that both daughters get married next year. So I thought, well, I want to make a quilt. And I have a quilt top that I thought, well, this would be really good. I could just quilt this up and I've got one quilt top done. And I showed her a picture of it and she's like, well, the colors are a little bright. <laughs> I'm like. Yeah, not everybody loves color the way I do. So she said they that she would probably like m more muted tones. And I just can't, I have a really hard time with that. But I did get a, a fat quarter pack of some fabric. And the quilt pattern, and I've shown this before, I am going to make the kaleidoscope quilt. This is a pattern book by Lori Holt. I'm gonna make the lap size quilt. I still have to get the background fabric. I did order a white because it goes with the fabric that I've got. Um, so I can only start cutting my fat quarters, um, but the white should come in the next week or so. So this is what I've picked for the quilt. So, you know, I can work with these colors. They're not too drab. They, I think it'll be really pretty. Um, it wouldn't be something I would normally make for myself, but you know, like I said before, not everything has to be rainbows, although I think it should be. 
So um, this stack also came with these other fabrics, but because I'm gonna use white as the background, these wouldn't show up very well. So I pulled these out. I only needed 25 different fat quarters um, to make that quilt. So I pulled 25 out of the, I don't know, 36 or something that came with it. What came with it? It doesn't say. Anyway, it's Folktale and it's um, put out by Moda. So these fabrics with a white background will be this quilt. So um, I've got to press all those fat quarters and then um, this is a lot of flying geese and flying geese are, let's see, it's these little triangles. Let me see if I can show you. Oh, and something I forgot to mention when I've shared this book before is it's even got cross stitch, cross stitch patterns in it for those patterns that I'll be making that someday. But a fat quarter for those of you that don't, or not a fat quarter, a flying geese is this here. Those little like triangles with, with the triangles on either side, that's a flying geese. I hate making flying geese and there's a crap ton of them. But I know a, woo, I know a different way of making them other than how the pattern is written. So I have to be careful how I cut my fabric to make sure that I cut it in a way that still gives me enough fabric for the other pieces because she's written the directions for a certain way of doing it. It'll make sense later. I I might I might do a little tutorial when I get to that point um, of making those fat quarters. Or God, why do I keep saying fat quarters? When I get to the point of making flying geese, um, and I've shown it before. I did a tutorial. Gosh, it's been a couple of years ago with um and it was a table runner of stars and um i showed different techniques of doing different things on each block that we made and i shared the technique i'm going to use where you use bigger squares and the way you sew them and cut them it ends up making four flying geese and then you trim them down so they end up being perfect um i will i will redo that or maybe i'll see if i have i don't know anyway I'm just sort of rambling. I will show you how to do it if you're interested because it does make making flying geese a lot easier and more accurate. So that's uh, coming up next on my quilting uh, projects. I am gonna go the first part of October, friends of, you know, my little quilting group of friends, we're gonna go do a re retreat. And so I'm hoping that all of that is cut could possibly start it, but that's what I'll work on on the retreat. Now I start back to work on Tuesday um, because of COVID and the restrictions and the everything. I am going to be working uh, six hours instead of three. So I'm going to have less time to do my crafty stuff, which is fine, but I would rather do crafty stuff all day, but um, it's okay. And we will get through it. It's gonna be a little bit challenging um, because when we left school in June, we were like, we're gonna go back full time, no masks, no social distancing, we're getting really good. And then of course, over summer, we've now had the Delta variant, which is highly contagious, more so than the original. And so they have to be extra careful. So because of that, um, I'm gonna work extra because we are losing quite a few staff that don't want to get vaccinated for whatever their personal reasons are and so they will not be able to work unless they're vaccinated. I'm vaccinated, I get to work. So long story on a, on a not so important topic is <laughs> that I'm gonna go back to work on Tuesday and I'm not gonna have as much time to make stuff. So I'm hoping that once I get everything cut, which is my bigger thing, is like if I can, can get myself prepped then if I just have a short period of time where I want to just sit down and sew for maybe a half an hour, all I have to do is sit down and just so I'm not trying to figure anything out or cut anything. It makes it easier for me to just grab it and do something really quick. So that's going to be coming up. Um, I do have another pattern kit that I bought a while ago and I, I showed it a few years ago. So I'll make that for the other daughter. This will be for the older daughter because I'm thinking that she might be the first one to get married. If I can just have these done and then when they get married, I'm ready to go. So um, that's it on my quilting. So I um, ordered some yarn 
I'm going to kick over and that was not a very good segue, but I ordered some yarn from Hobby, which is a yarn distributing company in Denmark. And I've ordered from them before and they have inexpensive yarns that are decent yarns. They're inexpensive. And um, so I, they were having a big sale on a yarn called, it was their Zafira. So the Zafira is a... Um, like a, it's that kind of yarn like wool folk where it's like a net that's, that the fiber's blown into. But this batch that they got wasn't as thick as it's supposed to be. It's a little bit thinner. So they sold it at a highly reduced price. So you could get 10 balls for $30. And I thought, you know what? I'm wanting to try it. I'd love to make some sort of a poncho, loose fitting something. And so I'm going to get it. And so for 30 bucks, like, you know, they each ball's got 164 yards. So in a you had to buy it in a pack of 10. So I've got 1,100 yards or 1,600 yards per packet. And I thought, I'll just get two. I don't know what I'm going to make, but I want to make sure I have enough. So um, I got the package pretty quickly, and it was sent through FedEx, and FedEx destroyed the package because, because they did. So it was in one of those like plastic mailing bags and the bag got ripped and then FedEx taped it all back up. But the package of 10, there was two packages of 10 inside and one of those packages of 10 also ripped, which meant I had loose balls of yarn and I only got seven out of the 10. So I contacted Hobby because I thought they need to know that FedEx is doing this. And I mean, talk about good customer service. They immediately got back to me and said, you know, what do you want? Do you want more of that yarn? Do you want just a store credit? And I'm like, I really kind of want to make sure I have enough to do whatever I'm going to do. So I really kind of wanted those 20 balls of yarn. And they're like, fine, no problem. I get an email the next day saying we can't just find loose balls. We're just going to send you another 10 pack. So they sent me another whole 10 pack free of charge to cover the fact that FedEx lost three balls of this yarn. So I have plenty because I now have 27 balls of yarn, which I could probably make a blanket. <laughs> so I thought I'm going to make whatever it is I'm going to make. I'm trying to swatch to see um, what kind of needle gauge I like the fabric of. And I even tossed around putting this with mohair maybe to, to make it thick again. Um, so I'm not sure. I'm not sure that it really needs it, but it's like, it's kind of a light worsted. It's not quite DK, but it's a thinner worsted. So I, if I, when I find the pattern that I want to do, I was thinking of doing the sheltered by Andrea Mowry and I might still, but it's got some texture, which sounds like it's, you know, not, not hard, but like you really got to be on your game and pay attention and um, and I don't think you'll see it. I don't think you're going to see the texture with this yarn. So I've got to try and find something else. I've got another pattern, um, Indigo Frost by Isabel Kramer, that I've had in my like favorites for years and years. And so I went ahead and bought the pattern because I think I might do it out of that, and which I won't need nearly this much yarn. So even a longer story, because I seem to be doing that today, is when I'm done doing whatever I'm going to do, I will pass on the other balls of yarn to you guys and I will do a giveaway with it. But it'll be a while because I want to make sure that I I get do what I want to do with it. But anyway, I mean, like hobby yarn, they were that was pretty, pretty good customer service. You just hardly see that anymore. And I was very, very happy with how they handled it because it was not their fault at all. So um, one more thing. I told you it was going to be quick. So one more thing. Um, I started a new craft. <laughs> so my friend Rhonda, who um, I have met through our local knit nights and we've remained in contact and we do our we were been doing knit nights over Zoom. And um, now we're doing them um, at a coffee shop on a Saturday morning with just a couple of us because we enjoy each other's company and just to stay connected. So she was showing me she's she's a crafter like I am or like she wants to try all the things and so she brought this the last time we got together and I was like I have to try that <laughs> so it is called kumi kumihimo and it is a Japanese braiding 
style. So this is my next project. I just put this on the disc. And so I bought these discs, discs um, on Amazon. You just Google Kumahimo. There's other people that have them. And what I got was, this is a really thick one. And this is good. The thicker ones, I'm from what I'm understanding, I'm doing a lot of YouTube videos and, and Google searches and whatever, is the thick one is, is a good one for slipperier yarns because the, the grooves are a little tighter. And so I loaded this up with yarn. So um, it feels a little tight, but I think it'll be okay once I get going. Um, but in the kit, I got that one and then these two. And it's like a thick fun foam is what it reminds me of. And you think, oh gosh, really? Like, you, that's so simple. But it really does help because it holds, your work goes down the hole and then it, it holds the fiber whatever you use in the little grooves and then you can make flat ones this the round ones make uh, more of like a tube and then you can make flat ones with these plates and I got all of that on Amazon for like 10 bucks and I thought okay that's a pretty inexpensive um, <laughs> new craft and so I made my first one yesterday and I used embroidery floss and I made that so it's like little flowers and um, I think it turned out pretty good. Now I got that far and then I had to stop and make dinner and when I started up again I kind of got I got confused. I couldn't remember exactly how I was supposed to do it. It's really easy. You're just moving one strand here and one strand here. Turn it one strand here and so you just go up and then down, turn up and down. And you just do that over and over again, but you can get yourself a little bit lost. And so I kind of did because I couldn't remember. Am I supposed to do this side? I mean, really, you'd think I'd remember. But anyway, kind of got a, a little bit of a mess up right here and then kind of kind of got back on track, but not exactly. So this is just embroidery floss. Um, I don't remember how many strands, 16 strands, I think. And... So it made this little braid. So you can make you, know, <clears throat> you can make bracelets, keychains. I I don't know what I'm going to do with it, but I, I enjoyed sitting and just doing something different and learning something new because I like to do that. And so I'm trying this one with yarn. It reminds me of like a jellyfish. <laughs> so we'll see how it goes. So this is kinky because this is an angora I unraveled from a sweater I got at a thrift store. So it's, it's got that kink in it, but I think, I think it's gonna hopefully work out. We'll see. And I found a website called bracelets. What was it called? I wrote it down. Friendship-bracelets.com. And it's basically just gives you the pattern for how to set up the disc, like where to put your colors and how many colors you need and how many strands. And then you just have to know how to do it. But they do have some links to some video tutorials and stuff. And there's a lot of stuff on YouTube, which I've only just sort of dabbled in a little bit. And um, it was kind of fun to just sit and, and do something just, it's kind of repetitive like knitting is where that can get kind of calming. But it was also fun to learn something new because I like to do that. So I'm going to get going here and get some fabric press so I can start cutting into it. And, um, you know, I will check in with you guys later. I am making some other stuff, but like I mentioned last time, it's for Christmas, so I can't show you. So um, I will hopefully be able to show you some stuff, you know, here in the near future. So Daryl Lynn. Please get a hold of me and I'll get that book sent to you. Thank you guys so much for uh, sitting with me for a little bit and I will see you next time. Bye.